it crosses all lines, from the wealthiest homes to the most impoverished. You kind of look around at everybody else and you think, why is everybody else so happy and I'm so miserable? Living and succeeding in spite of issues of mental health is really some of the biggest issues of our time. It's my third crochet class. It helps relieve stress, gets me out of my moods. My name is Yvonne, and I've been diagnosed with depression, schizoaffective bipolar disorder. It's just the fear of how you end the act with co-workers and things like that. That kind of causes a lot of stress for me. What happens is that you become really isolated and people around you, your friends, cannot understand you because you're not speaking about it. My name is Vilma and I suffer from generalized anxiety. My aunt suffered from schizophrenia and became homeless. My nephew developed schizophrenia when he was 17. When I was about 21 years old, I got into this really bad episode and landed me in the psych ward. I had this hair pulling incident and my mom thought I had some kind of skin disease because I had pulled out all the hair on my head. My name is Susie and I have obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, depression, and agoraphobia. Like I have a job, I go to school, like I can live on my own. I noticed at one point I'd stayed in my apartment for like 10 days straight and I, that just kind of freaked me out because I was like, what's, what's going on here? Nina, Nina was a very, very, very sensitive little girl from, from a very early age. She has bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder. I told a friend of mine, she says, oh my God, Susan, don't tell anyone. And I said, why not? And she says, because it, it, it's, it's, it's a terrible thing and people will hold it against her. And I said, no, I want help. She needs help. Someone out there can help me. When I was diagnosed with cancer, I kind of was embracing the thought of dying, but yet fighting to live. I knew that there was a possibility that I would die and I wasn't afraid to die. Little did I know that that was still a part of being um, depressed and suicidal. My son's diagnosis came early because he was suicidal at nine. I wasn't reaching him and I didn't know how to reach him and Mental Health Association helped me with that. They had workshops for parents with kids who were adolescents, teenagers growing into men and as a single parent I needed that support. My mom used to tell me that the depression and anxiety was in my head and that was, it was something that I could control. I didn't need any medications for it. But as I learned in my therapy sessions, this was a chemical imbalance and I couldn't control it. I think it was a long time before I realized that the issues of mental health had any stigma attached to it. You know, my family worked in it. My mother was the director of Gracie Square Hospital. My father was on the board of directors. I never really realized my father was bipolar until 10 years ago. And I'm a journalist. You'd think I might have figured it out, but it, it just wasn't discussed. It wasn't discussed. MHA is a group that thrives because of the community outreach. This agency really helped me when I was facing homelessness. It makes you feel like you're somebody. My name is Susan Zorinsky. My name is Precious. My name is Vilma. And I am one of the very many. And I am one of the many. I'm one of the many faces of, of mental, mental health. health.